What's going on guys? Welcome back to the garage. So if you follow me on Instagram, you may have seen that I picked up another vehicle. The deal was pretty good, so uh, I felt like I couldn't really pass it up. But, uh, well, let's get out to the front and check it out. All right guys, so here it is. The new purchase. As you might have guessed, it's another Volvo. <laughs> Um, but if you can tell by the chrome mirrors, this one is like a fairly early one. Uh, so this is a 1979 244 with a B21A uh, that has a carb, an SU HIF6 carb. Um, yeah, it's not too bad of shape. got uh, no power features so manual windows uh, manual locks all that sort of stuff and the cool thing is with this one is that uh, the previous owner swapped in an M46 um, and got rid of the old automatic so this one does drive uh, pretty good so all in all it's a pretty solid car um, it has been a little bit neglected um, by the previous owner just because they didn't have too much time to work on it and no space. So this is where the car was originally bought um, down in Victoria and it stayed its whole life there. Actually, here's a cool little piece So this little book here was the original uh, sale sort of thing with the owner's manual and whatnot. Uh, 1979, North America. And this dude here was the guy who actually sold it. So that's kind of neat. Uh, that's the dealership there. I think they've just moved uh, just around the block from where they used to be. But that's kind of cool. Um, yeah, so the interior is a little bit, um, crusty. This fabric is like pretty worn out and pretty thin. Um, but everything seems to work other than the damn blower motor. So I got this car down quite a bit from the original asking price just because the blower motor did decide to go right before I went to go look at it. Um... So that's kind of a bummer that that needs to be done again, but uh, it does get really hot in here anyways. So, you know, I don't know if anybody knows uh, how to fix that. This thing just, just like the blue car there, it, uh, it just blows hot air all the time. So there's no real worry about, um, or it just radiates hot air. So there's no worry about it fogging up or anything like that. Um, previous owner did put in this stereo and speakers that fit in the corner here are in the uh, pockets here that are actually too big so kind of an annoying thing is that you have to pull this out to get the window to roll up and down same on that side uh, it's kind of annoying but not a huge deal easily easy to change out I might go ahead and pick up another one of the Auslander stereos um, just so I can potentially get some collector plates on this thing because they'll fail you for something that doesn't look like it uh, came in the car. So I guess this thing is kind of cool. I guess this was an option that maybe not a lot of people have, which I didn't know, uh, is the coin tray. Um, from what I've read, it was an option in Europe. And then, um, yeah, the older cars that I've seen just have a straight piece. Unfortunately, this thing is pretty floppy. Um, I'm not sure if there's a way to fix it. Um, other interior bits here. So, unfortunately, the speedometer doesn't, um, or the odometer doesn't work, and the speedometer is way off. 
Um, but I'll be picking up another cluster soon uh, that will remedy that. So yeah, I think it's, when I get over 90, it becomes, you know, close to 30K off. So it's reading like 130 or 120, 130 when I'm going around 100. Uh, but that's not too bad. Clutch feels pretty good. Transmission shifts pretty nice. Uh, the overdrive works good. Overall, fairly clean on the inside. Um, from what I've seen and what I've heard from the previous owner, the floor pan's in pretty good shape. There's no real rust back there. Um, I'll have to fix this. There's a hole here. I think there was a piece of cardboard or something that used to go over that, but for now they've just got this rag stuck, to, stuck in here, so I've just kept it there. So overall, it's pretty clean, but uh, there are some bad points to the body. So as you can see here, um, they did hit something at some point. Um, so this trim is, actually I have the trim piece. It came with the car, but it is gone, or not on the body right now, obviously. And it is a little bit bent. Same with this. And, Unfortunately, there is some rust on the body. So this rocker is pretty well gone. Uh, carries on here. A little bit of bubbling in the door. And down in here and along the wheel well. I think this is about the worst of it. And then you can see I'm missing the trim piece here. And there's a big nasty bit right there. Surprisingly, the trunk doesn't leak. And this one's 10 years older than that one, and that trunk leaks like a sieve. So, typical uh, 240 rust spot. Nice big hole right through the fender well, so that will have to get fixed eventually. Um, and then you, there's another hole. This side's not too bad in here, but there's another hole kind of right in here. You can kind of see a bit of daylight there. Um, again, not the worst in the world, but there are some odd signs here. Like this looks like it was rebuilt out of Bondo. And if I close the trunk, it's kind of weird right here. So I'm not sure if this was crunched at some point and bondoed up. And there's a bit more rust on this butt cheek over here, which I think if I do this over, I'm just gonna nip this off, make it flush, and put in a new patch panel. So there's some rust right there. A little bit down here. Not not the worst in the world for a car from 1979 that spent its life by the ocean. Uh, let's see if you can get under here. So another thing that kind of sucks is the exhaust is rotted. Uh, just because this car never traveled too far and uh, never heated up the exhaust, so it rusted. Um, you can kind of see my ghetto little um, cheap fix there. So that tail section there was completely separated from the rear muffler, so I just got some tube that I had laying around and some clamps and just clamped it together. And there's a little bit of a hole there, but it is cracked at the top or at the front where the Y section is. So my thoughts are, I'll jack this car up, take this exhaust off and throw it on here. 
and that should solve that maybe throw in a resonator so it's not super obnoxious and I get pulled over again um, but yeah I'll pop the hood here and I'll give you guys a look at B21 So there she is, surprisingly clean in here. So the previous owner told me that they um, took the head off and rebuilt it, or uh, probably did the valves and stuff like that, and they took the carb off and rebuilt it. So it does run really well, actually. Um, but there are some little bits of hokiness going on here. Um, and actually, from what I've read too, so. So, uh, I don't know, I think this is a Canadian only option. They called it Pulse Air. It's like air injection, which I think there was another version of that in the States. Um, but the Canadian version had what they called Pulse Air. I'm not exactly sure what it does, but this hose is completely, you know, worn out. It doesn't fit tight whatsoever on this fitting here. But all in all, it's not too bad. And then another bit of hokiness um, is this valve here that uh, I don't know if this is a common mod or what, but um, it's like a, it's a ball valve. So if you open it up or close it, it adjusts your idle speed. Um, so. It's definitely easier than adjusting the carb, but uh, I can't imagine that that's the correct way to do it. But, uh, you know, I have no idea about carbs. So, for now that's good enough, but until I figure it out, uh, you know, it'll just stay like that. Uh, it's It idles kind of around 900, which I've read in the book is where it's kind of supposed to be, so. I'm um, not too worried about that, but it does smell a little bit rich. So there may be the wrong needles in there or something like that. Uh, but for now, it's good enough. Um, yeah, battery's good. What not, there's not too much rust in here, but actually you can kind of see here that should not be like this and that is from this collision that ruined this trim piece so um, there may be some underlying issues that I can't see but uh, yeah I don't know it seems to drive fairly straight I mean the steering wheel is crooked but whatever so is that one but uh, no let's start it up here it's still cold but I'll show you the starting procedure here. I'd never done it before uh, with a carb and a manual choke. So with this M46, there's no neutral safety switch. So if you start it in gear without the clutch in, it will jump forward, but I just started in neutral anyways. So key in, we'll pull this out a bit so the choke light comes on make sure it's in neutral again and fire it up here so the previous owner told me to basically let this thing warm up until uh, the temp just touches the green and then it should be good to go. Um, I don't know if you can hear the exhaust sort of echoing off the other car there, but there is a hole pretty much just right down here, which is kind of annoying. It makes this thing sound like shit. But um, no, I'll let it idle here and uh, warm up and bump this down 
and I'll let you guys hear it run uh, when it's not uh, high idling. It actually sounds really good. It sounds way less clopped out than that one. Um, so it's actually, you know, once I get the exhaust fixed and maybe do some new uh, struts, um, this thing should ride pretty nicely. All in all, it's pretty solid other than the rust, um, but that can all be fixed. So I'll get back to you in a minute when this thing's warmed up. So there we go, idling at about 900, uh, which is where the book says. So that's all good to me, even with that uh, hokey little setup there. Um, if anybody knows how to remove baked on stickers, especially from the inside here of the glass, um, yeah, I definitely appreciate that tip because I definitely want to get this off here. Oh, that nasty buzzer sound. So yeah, there she is running. A lot less clappier than the other one. Uh, but there's a little bit of movement here. Possibly need to redo the engine mounts and maybe take a look at the spark plugs and the distributor uh, just to get rid of that little bit of shimmy there. But all in all, it's really good. Um, I'll probably have to do the uh, timing belt at some point. I don't know how recent that is. The speedometer says 259 and it says 191 so uh, maybe about time maybe I should just do it just for peace of mind but yeah no it's a pretty good little car. Here where that exhaust leak's coming out of Anyways guys, that's the new purchase, that's the new daily. Uh, still a little bit undecided what I want to do with it. Um, you know, if the body's too far gone to keep and save. Um, I only paid 900 bucks for it, so yeah. It'll all depend if it's worth dumping money into it at a body shop to get it all tittled up, but yeah, no, it's a solid little car for now. It doesn't have a VI, so that's nice. I can drive it daily. Um, but yeah, stay tuned for uh, potential updates on that thing. Uh, and as always, thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, thanks for the support. We're almost at 500 subscribers, so that's really cool. Um, yeah, I'm surprised people actually like to watch this stuff, so. <laughs> um, once again, thanks for watching.